Here are the three critical things that I learned about editor tooling with the editor window while making my free and open source mini golf micro game. Number one, you can draw in the scene view using scene view dot during scene GUI. As you can see here, we just assign that delegate to the during scene GUI that receives a scene view as a parameter. And then we can use the handles API to draw anything we want in the scene, just as we do with our standard on scene GUI for a custom editor for one of our scripts. But remember, we're not doing a custom editor here. This is an editor window. So we don't have to have a specific game object selected and that's really powerful. I use this to draw bounds around the level so I could visualize where the ball was going to stop and reset whenever the ball went too far away from the ground because it's mini golf and we're in space or something. By the way, Chris here from Lom Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dream become a reality by bringing you important information about editor tooling so you can level up your editor tooling game. The second critical thing that I learned was we can retain the prefab instance, that prefab connection. So when you just do object.instantiate, if you do that from the editor window, it doesn't know that's a prefab. It's just a normal game object at that point from the editor's perspective. But if you use prefab utility instantiate prefab, then the editor knows this is a prefab. So whenever you make changes to that core prefab, it's going to remember that is a prefab and those changes will be propagated across the board. This is basically what the editor does when you drag a prefab from your project panel into the scene view or into the hierarchy. So if you want to make sure that you're instantiating prefab, so it retains that connection, prefab utility instantiate prefab, not game object instantiate or object instantiate. Maybe 2.5 related, but not really totally separate. If you want to find the path to that prefab, which was important for me because I was dynamically building out levels and I need to be able to build them at runtime and in the editor. So I needed to know the path that that particular prefab was at. You can use prefab utility, get corresponding object from source, which gives you the object. And then you can use asset database, get asset path from that object. And that'll give you the full assets path to that object. Then if it's in the resources folder, you can do some path manipulation. So you can use resources.load, or you can of course use the asset database to load it as well. And for number three, using the UI builder is much slower than just writing the UXML yourself. Now, if you're watching this channel, you probably write code or are trying to get into writing code, learning that syntax for the UXML makes it go way faster, way easier, and you're much less error prone than using the UI builder. But Chris, how can it be more error prone to use a UI builder? Well, at least with Unity 2022 and also this pre-release version of Unity 6 that I'm using, if you make changes to your code or to your USS and you have unsaved changes in the UI builder, you lose those changes whenever the domain reload comes in. So you may have many unsaved changes <laughs> in the UI builder. And since you're doing stuff in the UI builder, then maybe you need to tweak some USS. It's easy to forget to save. And whenever that happens, you lose everything that was done since your last save. And that really sucks and is frustrating. So I highly encourage you, if you're using UI toolkit, learn to write your own UXML. You can use the UI builder for things that you don't know in very small chunks, save it immediately, and then hop over, write that UXML. It took me like maybe an hour to get comfortable writing it. And then it was smooth sailing from then on out. I recently did a video covering how I made the editor window that you've been seeing in this video. If you want to see the full process of how that was made, go ahead and check that out. I've got a link in the description, card on the screen, pretty sure cards on the side. Watch, I'm going to be wrong. I'm going to have to flip the video. If you want to see more about that. So the three critical things. Number one, you can draw on the scene view using scene view during scene GUI. Number two, you can keep the prefab reference with prefab utility instantiate prefab two and a half, get the path with prefab utility, get corresponding object from source, and then asset database, get asset path. Fully three, UXML editing is the way to go. If you got value out of this video or any of my videos, make sure you've liked and subscribed. If you want to support merch store, Patreon, YouTube member, affiliate links in the description, Patreon YouTube members get shout out shown on every video. At the awesome tier, there's Ivan, Ifiabolus, Sneddon, and Mustafa. And of course, there's all the other great supporters you saw earlier as well. Huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me in that way. I'll see you on the next video.